What's going on, everybody? I want to make a quick video talking about Monty Williams signing with the Detroit Pistons as their new head coach for a six-year, $78.5 million contract. I think pretty much everybody's going to be talking about the contract, and for good reason. It makes him easily the highest paid coach in the league. And, you know, it's it's. I heard something on the radio today that I definitely have to agree with, is that it's probably going to reset the coaching market. I mean, you're telling me a guy like Eric Spolstra can't get that contract when he's up for a new one? You know, Mike Malone, all these different guys, I mean... Monty Williams is certainly well respected across the league and he did a good job with the Suns but I don't know highest paid that's a that's a bit of a stretch but I'm I'm not going to criticize I mean I'm wearing a Suns shirt I'm if you guys don't know already I'm a Phoenix Suns and Arizona sports fan in general and I have a lot of respect for Monty Williams I was in favor of him being let go fired whatever you want to call it and I think it was good reason I mean you can, you just can't lose back to back after coming off a finals appearance in 2021 you can't lose back-to-back -back seasons in the second round by 30-plus at home. That's just, it's, it's uh, you can't survive that. And there were a lot of things I was frustrated about, but overall, Monty had a great tenure here. He really helped to build the culture. I think that's probably what he's going to be most beneficial, uh, you know, working with the Pistons now, is building a winning culture with a young team. You know, he picked up, I believe, an 18- or 19-win Suns team and eventually made the finals with them. I think when it came down to the postseason itself, you know, certainly, uh, you know, I don't want to, I heard this elsewhere, and I think that's something I want to reiterate. People a lot of times criticize coaches and say they need to make adjustments, but then they don't say what adjustments they want to make. So I'm not going to say here, I think he should have made some adjustments because I don't necessarily have the answers as to what adjustments I would have liked him to make. I felt like when we got Durant, that wasn't, you know, that it was, you know, late in the season after the trade deadline, you know, at the trade deadline. So, there wasn't a lot of time, and I know Durant got hurt, but I feel like we did not unlock something there with KD. The offense in the postseason, especially in that second round against the Nuggets, it just wasn't very fluid. It didn't look like we were running a lot. Sometimes it was just, you know, there's, and that was a problem with the Maverick series as well. I just think uh, when we started to get figured out, we didn't have many counter punches. And I think that's what a coach is there to do, obviously. Uh, as well, I was kind of disappointed with the rotations. I remember in the last postseason when we lost to the Mavericks, I was really disappointed. Like, campaign just absolutely disappeared from the lineup. Uh, this postseason, you know, I felt that Monty did not really play his new acquisitions. You know, guys like Terrence Ross or, or you know, we got Torrey Craig back this year. He didn't even play in the second round, but he's just using a guy like Shamit the whole time. You know, just stuff like that. Really, It really drove me crazy as a fan. And, you know, look, taking a step back and looking at it, I think that it, those are uh, reprehensible, you know, actions as a coach. But overall, you know, the team just, you know, wasn't good enough this year. But you have to make some sort of change. I think I think the Suns just needed a new voice after losing back to back years at home by 30 plus. But uh, like I said, you know, just I'll, I'll finish up with some of the things I, I didn't like that Monty did at the end. I think, you know, certain things coaching wise um, schematically and you know he never unlocked DeAndre Ayton and so if you want to talk about it just from a basketball sense I, I feel like there was a hope that Ayton would eventually be you know take it to the next level and a lot of that is on the player too I think coaches get a lot of blame for things that players don't do but um, you know that didn't work out and then just the, the relationship itself I mean I think he handled that badly by not even speaking to Ayton all offseason you know that was that relationship was completely severed uh, you know, I, I do think he lost a little bit of the locker room at the end. There's just a lot of talk throughout the postseason and then after the season. It just it was it was going downhill. But I, I like I you know started with Monty. We really can't forget the great stuff he did at the beginning of his tenure. I really think he helped to build a winning culture in Phoenix. You know, back to back uh, very good seasons. I, I think we may have been the one seed the year we made the finals, and then we were the one seed the year after, best record in the NBA. So I mean. You know, even there were some failures in the playoffs, and I think, you know, some of those failures can be attributed to Monty. Ultimately, he had a great tenure here. I think, like I, you know, I'll reiterate, I think he's going to do a great job building a culture in Detroit. Now, as far as the Detroit roster, I was just taking a look today. I'm personally not as high on it as other people are. You know, I'm not, I think Cade Cunningham has the potential to be a star player, but I think we can't just pencil him in as one. He had 17 points per game his rookie season, but he shot terribly. Um, you know, particularly from the three-point mark, I believe he was hovering around 30%. You know, 
you know, I think he was 40, 40, 30, 85, you know, not, not horrible. I'm not going to over exaggerate and say he was, you know, too, too bad, but it wasn't impressive. Um, you know, I, I'm not completely, you know, I say all that to say, I'm not completely sold on Cunningham. They have Ivy and Duran. So there's some pieces, they have Bogdanovich, so, you know, they're young and they would have really benefited to have a top three pick this year, but they didn't. And I'm kind of glad they didn't because they held Cunningham out in the hopes to tank and uh, it backfired. So look, I think Monty, it's kind of crazy money. Personally, I think it's an overpayment for him as a coach, but I think he's a great fit. You know, the, the Pistons obviously identified something and said, hey, we need him as our head coach. And I don't hate that line of reasoning. You know, he did a great job building culture in Phoenix and I don't see any reason why he can't if he gets the right pieces in Detroit. So that's it, you know, best of luck to Monty Williams. And uh, as far as the Suns coaching search goes, I'll touch on that when we hire somebody, but just please don't let it be Doc Rivers.